There you go. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Howdy YouTube. Uh, how's everyone doing this morning? Good. Yeah. Who's, who's tired from last night? Yeah. I'm always tired. Who's, uh, who's able to get some sleep last night? What is sleep? Yeah. What is sleep? Anybody who's like, I haven't slept since Saturday? Yeah? What were you doing? What were you up to last night? That's a musician, right? Uh, him and never last standing with the last act last night. How was the concert? Was it good? Uh, good. You better hear that. Cool. Well, this is, uh, again, How Do You Do with myself and Ray Spess and with Paleo. I'm just kind of waking up myself if you couldn't tell. But uh, the entire point of this panel is to share our experiences with the platform of YouTube and, of course, with other social media platforms like Twitter and the TikTok. And you all can just ask us anything about, I guess, uh, questions in your mind of like how to grow a platform, how to achieve a certain audience, how to hit certain metrics, and a lot to know. Grace? Yeah. You do YouTube. I do YouTube. I, uh, I, I myself have a channel that it's not so much, um, you know, well, like Saber up here with uh, a whole team of people. Um, I'm a lot of the stuff that I do is myself, but at the same time, it's also a hobby, more of a hobby channel for me. So there's a lot less stress involved, I'm sure, a lot less uh, expectation too. Uh, but uh, there's different ways to approach uh, going after YouTube. Like, you know, is it is it something that you're looking to make a living off of versus something that you're like, I want to uh, share a passion of mine and and maybe not so, you know, like for me, I, I have a, a full-time job that uh, I also do on top of the video making, which means it takes a lot of time away from the video making, um, but it also alleviates some of the stress of that video making. So, uh, yeah, we'll have different perspectives, and then and then Pedro up here, you got you got yeah. stuff going on. Yeah, I like my YouTube channel, right? I do like movie reviews and stuff and podcasts because I have the podcast channel and the. Um, the, the my normal channel that's just like reviews and everything, um, and then I also do like uh, I've done some editing for Saber, and I might be doing some editing for some other people very soon. I'm not gonna say who it is, but yeah, making us wait. Yeah, and I do YouTube professionally. We have a team and do animation reviews. Who who, who gave me the hammer? So we give me the hammer, hammer and I'm like, thank you. I needed this for for stimming. But um but yeah, I do animation reviews. I got a team of people, I mean I've worked with you before. Um and I collab with Ray's my project sometime and Bray's reacts every so often when I can manage it. <laughs> when I actually turn my footage in. One of these days. One of these days. Anyone in the audience? I hope they want as your team. Give me that tea back. <laughs> Anybody here in the audience have a online platform that they have, like have a okay? I'm curious to hear what you all have to say. Red card, what do you do? Uh, like Grace, I do convention vlogs, uh, and I actually started out doing PMVs. Um, uh, and the first, the, I, I um, after I went to BronyCon 2013, which was the first convention that I ever went to, I saw Grace's vlogs and thought, I kind of want to do that. Hmm. Um, so, uh, the first convention that I did was actually KatsuCon 2014 in National Harbor, Maryland, which is out of the Washington, D.C. Uh, it was on such a tight budget. I was using my old, I, I, uh, my old iPod Touch uh, with the camera on it. 32, uh, 32 gigabytes. Uh, kept running out of space. Um, it, it, it was a very, very low budget. Then I decided to get a camcorder. Uh, the battery life on the, the, on the battery that came with it was so short, so I said, I need to get a, a larger battery. Uh, and I, I just kept, you know, investing more and more and more, like, you know, uh, into it to get like, better equipment, better software. Better ingredients. Uh, better uh, jobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it's just, I, 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 I pride myself on how can I make uh, the Next thing I'm going to do better than the last one. That's a spirit. Yeah. What, what do you think about where you stand today with your content? 
Do you feel like, yeah, I definitely have improved and I fucked the game? Um, well, or, or you can go back to the iPod. <laughs> well, the, well, the, honestly, I, I, to be honest, I, I struggle with, like, you know, like, audience reach, but that really doesn't matter to me. I just want to show off, you know, like, my creativity and, you know, my coverage and everything. I, like, the, I, I mean, to be honest, audience reach doesn't really matter to me. If I, if I, if I get, like, you know, like, maybe a thousand views on, like, a regular, uh, regular, like, uh, like your time coverage video, great. Well, you're, I see it, the convention's a lot hustling and filming, so good on you for, you know, keeping at it. Yeah. Right, first, like, when did this turn into like, a, a, a weed and roasted What's going on? <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's cool because, uh, again, by raise of hands, just who has, like, again, a YouTube platform, or, you know, we have a lot of content creators in here, and everyone's got their own journey going on. And, uh, you know, there's there's some people in here that are just getting started. Like uh, I'm sure you in the red shirt, you 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 look like someone who's just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were here. How are you? Hi, pretty good. How was the? Uh, you, I've been following your saga, the, the Reddit. Um, the, what, what was the? the oh, the R slash playing stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's related to YouTube. That's gonna be a big video. You're like the tip of the spear when it comes to the Bernie fandom <laughs> and trying to like. No, seriously, you don't like the And those those come watch that entire Reddit stuff <laughs> go down. Oh, well, well, our place, right? So, yeah, our place is right. That's cool. Um, all right, I will we'll go about this then. We got we got a Q and A mic right here. It's very close to the, oh yes it is. Yeah. <laughs> so feel, uh, feel free to come on up, uh, ask us questions. We, like, we said, we're going to be I suppose. What's that? Did the meeting be raise their hand? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> you can choose. <laughs> Do you dare approach us? Who's on tight? What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was for me. Uh, but yeah, again, any, any questions regarding really anything related to content creation um, or building an audience or, or, or just YouTube in general. How do I play a video? What button do I press? You know, anything. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. You, you mentioned before they use uh, OBS a lot and like what other like video editing programs that you can like recommend to like just like first time people out there like uh, because like obviously not everybody's going to be like oh I'm going to use uh, Final Cut Pro whatever version they have out now because Skill set that, like, I have been going to school for video coverage for like X amount of years. Like, what do you recommend for like those who are just like uh, specifically wanting to start out for like video editing uh, for simplicity? Um, so for, for OBS, that's more for like, like live streaming stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, there are a lot of like simpler like uh, editing programs that um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a free one that I've seen recently. I move. Yeah, move, like, like anything, uh, anything where you can just like cut footage. Um, yeah, yeah, like Movie Maker and then um, iMovie. iMovie is another one. If you're just getting started, those are really good, simple programs to just give you like the flow of, of chopping stuff up. Because I know, like, yeah, um, like I, I know I use Vegas for editing. Yeah, so, um, but like that's also that was after using Movie Maker for a couple of years. What version of Vegas are you on, guys? What's that? You update Vegas often, or are you, what version of Vegas do you use? Uh, 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I, I think I, I, I do, I think I'm on, I think I'm on Vegas 17. Okay. Okay, yeah, I, I think that's what I'm on too, because like, uh, uh, if you've heard of uh, Humble Bundle, they sometimes do a, a bundle of like programs, and they'll have it marked down as like, oh yeah, you get 20, you get all these programs for like 20 bucks. Um, because it's usually, deal. yeah, because usually like Vegas sells for like over 100 or 150. Um, so or you can just pirate it. Yeah, I was, <laughs> <a sign. laughs> I was gonna say it, but yeah. I'll say it. Sea of Thieves. I, I was, uh, uh, so my wife and I, uh, we, we have already cleared up channel and uh, we've been playing a lot of Sea of Thieves and I just, I'm like, what if it wasn't treasure, but like computer programs that you're building with all the cards? It's like, look at all these movies that just came out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's webcam footage one. John Delancey's like, no! <laughs> 
Um, all right, I've got other questions. Yes. Uh, in regards to that kind of a non-official to your hiatus and completely separate from law stuff, so in regards to making and posting stuff uh, as a way to get enough outreach, really, to get yourself out there in a way that people can see it and be in a few different spheres, where would you recommend posting? Because I kind of stuck myself on Twitter and what's, you know, broken Costco Tumblr or whatever love of that. <laughs> What kind of content do you make? Uh, I do a lot of visual art, but not, and I'm also stepping into animatic and work. Well, currently, I'm down for production on uh, full blown animation. Mm. Uh, so I'm kind of trying to step up the game a little bit. So I'm saying. Yeah, it's not happening. Someone's watching all my videos. <laughs> But um, uh, the, the best advice I can give is like, there's no shame in looking for a trend to spring for it. Because I see a lot of artists who are like, here's my original piece, and it's like seven likes. Yeah. Here's something that's pandering to a fan that's established. Okay, it's a thousand likes. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with playing towards the fan that more sort of popular yeah. and trendy, just to get noticed. And then after a while, once you build that momentum, that audience, it's okay. I can start to experiment and do more of my own original stuff. So I feel like when artists are like, oh, I feel like uh, I feel like no one likes my original stuff is because they don't know you yet. And what can you click with? Okay, find a common denominator. Here's some Star Wars art, or here's like some anime or whatever. Folks are like, I watch that, I like it. I also like your style, and then I stick around. You just build off of that. Yeah, like you, you like you said a lot before about how like the Bronny fan was like a big springboard. Huge. Huge. Yeah. It was like a boot camp. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what is what is a editing program? What is drums? What is drama? <laughs> what are drugs? But um, yeah, I, uh, springboards are important. Uh, springboards are important online as far as like you know getting an audience moving. Just find some momentum and run with it. Uh, as far as the platform goes, it take, or, uh, TikTok, Twitter. Yeah, it'd be kind of hit or miss. Um, I think Tumblr is uh, apparently Tumblr actually is pretty cool right now, but a lot of it's growth is dead. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's yeah. That's the big problem. So like for art, I mentioned Twitter or Divino. Um, and then as far as where it's like massive, massive growth right now, TikTok. But like how do you, I mean you have to like, how do you present art on TikTok? I don't even like participate in TikTok myself. Because like, uh, apparently also YouTube shorts are really popular, or so YouTube tells us, so we would say. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird because like YouTube doesn't make any money off of it, so it's like why are they coming it? Because they want to keep you for growth. Yeah. They want to. They want. They want growth to companies like that is like really lucrative. They want to, even if they're like lucrative, how? And they're like shh. We're not watching. I hope that answer answers your question. Okay. Questions. Yes. Um, in what ways, as an animator, do I have any hope of starting a YouTube channel? Mm. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah. Yeah. At that point, like, that's probably use like TikTok or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, TikTok's getting as far as the growth is. Um, I see a lot of people post like animatics and, and like, I guess some storyboards up there or whatever. Just, uh, I mean, I think that's one of the questions that, oh, I think is like, you know, monetizing on TikTok's tough. Because, like, like, Tom told me that, like, TikTok, but so if I ran into the problem, of like, cause you know, are you all familiar with Vine? Yep. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Remember Vine back in 2014? So Vine was basically like the precursor to TikTok, and it was really popular and some really. I mean, you get you got like uh, online stars to this day who still exist that they start on Vine. Wasn't um, who's that one guy who was the one who was the voice? Of Rosie D. He started he started on Vine, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Vine's like cool, six second videos. You know, it's really popular. And they're like, oh. How do we monetize this? Six second videos and then we die. Um, TikTok, on the other hand, 
is like, okay, how do you monetize it? Like, well, we're taking your data, so we'll start with that. And then um, also they have a big old like TikTok fund where they just dump money into funding certain creators. And I've heard that like TikTok is very vicious. I'm sorry, it's not some like TikTok dissertation, but like I mean, it's one. It's like the platform right now as far as growth goes. Like YouTube's trying to keep up. And it's weird because like TikTok's trying to become more like YouTube, where they're making their videos longer. While YouTube's like, we want to make it shorter, or they're YouTube short. Yeah. Program. And but it's weird because like there's still like very long videos that still get a lot of views on YouTube. Right. I mean, like what like, like Dallas Mark just put out and right. Billion put out is like six hour and twenty minute video on Lost. Quentin Tarantino. Oh, not Quentin Tarantino. Quentin reviews. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Quentin Tarantino reviews. <laughs> but um, no, it's it's it's. I mean, YouTube is definitely more comfortable than TikTok. I mean, their stuff is like monetized and self sufficient, while TikTok's constantly taking money and dumping it into the you know, trying to keep TikTok creators on their platform. Apparently. On TikTok, there's a trial period where um, they will uh, say, "Okay, here, let's see if you can keep up and, and keep making content." And then they'll deliberately throttle your channel to make it hurt and like lower your viewership. And then, okay, let's see if we'll keep pushing through this and keep uploading videos and keep making content. And if you don't, they'll put you on the list saying they weren't strong enough. You're out of here. Well, so, just like YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> just like YouTube. No, it, it's a lot more vicious. Yeah, that's because like, 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 the way their fund works is they're like, are you worthy enough for it? And if not, yeah. they'll like just put you out of the pasture. And a lot of uh, a lot of these TikTok creators, so they're so competitive, they'll start over if it doesn't work. Like they'll, yeah. they'll our channel's dead, it didn't work, and start over. Yeah, because like on YouTube, like you can go away for a while and like still like come back. YouTube's all forgiving. I think YouTube's also a bit more cultivated for animation. Versus TikTok, TikTok to me seems very superficial. I don't know. I'm just like a boomer. But um, <laughs> to answer your question, though, mm -hmm. is animation cool? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think so. Yeah. The, the music that I think, so. I think is challenging. You might need to find like, some public domain songs, which sucks because it's like, no, those are boring. But um, I, I feel like uh, also the, the same way I answered your question, like, there's no shame in, like, you know, if you want to do a Steven Universe animatic with some music, folks are like, oh, yeah, no, Steven Universe, and then kind of throw that moment in I guess building momentum, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the name of the game. Can you get that, you know, initial push? Okay, cool. Keep running with this. Because once the algorithm blesses you, holy poof, uh, don't let it go. Don't let it go. Uh, did I answer your question more or less? Do you all want to say any, by any on that at all? I'm just curious, do we have any other animators in the crowd? Hey. I'm still waking up, by the way. That's good. Good morning. Uh, do we uh, just, I guess, kind of like a shout out? Do, do you guys have uh, any other platforms that you see are good for animation right now, like in a release game? More like a comment. I think something that can be really beneficial as an animator that still can be short in the sense that it keeps people's attention span is joining multi-animator projects. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 with Joshua. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that's good advice. This network self networking is important and rubbing shoulders and everything. So, and also I, I find a lot of animators who are doing these projects are very. I mean, I think most artists in general have like very low self esteem. <laughs> They're like, oh, I'm good. I'm not glad. This is like a movie that you're great, yeah. you know. But um, yeah, but like rubbing shoulders, getting out there, networking, because you never know what doors it might open. Where it's like, okay, like someone really likes my art, or I'm, I'm with a really cool group writing with them. And we're doing another project, and another one, and I'm actually building a name for myself and everything. So, moments. Sorry. No, no, no. Um, I know for me personally, I found a lot of really awesome animators just by watching multi-animators. Like, I'm not going to There was um, an animator for the Joshua animated project. I mean, there's a really good animator, but there was one who like had this scene with Joshua. Oh, are you all familiar with the, my Joshua, the Promising yeah. Animation Project? Okay. So for those, yeah, <laughs> for those who don't know, Joshua Promising was a really bad animated movie that I ripped on like years ago, and it kind of became a meme for my channel. And I'm like, well, let's reanimate the movie. That'd be fun. And uh, there was a guy who signed up for the project. He turned his scene in within like a, like, a few weeks. And it was like a DreamWorks level of animation where they like, had like Joshua running past. It was like, the Joshua Robinson was like you know, Moses and Joshua and Caleb and stuff like that for the Bible. 
and it was the part of the Red Sea, and a little anthro blind who was so well animated walking past the water. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing with this project? This is good. Like, this is like industry levels of professional. He's like, yeah, thanks for having me. Bye. And I'm like, what? This is horrible. Was there somebody like from like the Tangled series that worked on this? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The, the people were like, I'm, I'm actually working for like Disney. And I'm like, thank you. I <laughs> 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 to pay you. I can treat you like Mickey now. Um, all right. So, uh, did more or less answer your question? Oh no. Uh, wait, we're rephrasing the question. I want to make sure I didn't answer it though. So, well, I mean, it's a very, it's a pretty hopeless question. Is as an animator, what hope do I have to start channeling into? Miss Hope. Yeah, yeah, I guess it gives it certain elements of like what can you personally bring to the table, but also like just find the momentum. Find something funny. Like, I've noticed that like, if animators make something like very funny, like people will watch it over and over again. Like one one uh, animator that uh, started a couple of years ago when he like blew up was a Doobus Goobus. Yes. Um, yeah. It's like his videos are hilarious. Just like very short videos. Um, but like he, he got a big following like very quickly. That's because he was funny. Yeah, that's true. It's hard to be funny though. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, um, and also, like, for what was you forget that YouTube is very hostile to animators, too. Yeah. Where it's like, a cool two minute video that you spend a year working on, seven people watched it. And it's like, oh, like, someone on the vlog, just flipping the camera and doing a thousand views. Like, crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's a YouTube's a views of you, you know? And I know that there's certain, like, CTR and stuff like that and, and whatnot, but still. Okay, so I'll try to be really funny. Yeah, try that. <laughs> I'll try to be funny. So yeah, it's just be fun. Just be fun. Okay. I advise to everything. It's like, how am I going on? It's be just be fun. Yes. So just okay. be funny. <laughs> 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 Tony. Right, just be funny. Um, so something for me um, that I'm really watching is um, as far as viewer engagement is. I forgot the term for it, but I'll tell you on analytics how long they watch your video. Retention. Or, retention. Yeah, that's what it is. And, um, and so what I was going to ask you guys about is interest, because I feel like I do live action skate comedy, um, which I feel like is kind of rare in the Bernie fandom, but it's starting to get a little bit more common. I want to think I'm a trendsetter, but I don't think that's the case. Um, so something I was going to ask is my intros, the way I script my videos, are typically a bit longer and drawn out. So like, do you have any advice for like when you're starting the videos and stuff, how to kind of keep your attention a bit higher? Because I've noticed for my videos, it's kind of wildly inconsistent. Um, that's tough, because Depends on your your routine, the comedy. Is it, a, is it a slow burn, dry sense of humor? Oh no, it's like it's like rapid fire cuts. Like I'm always trying to be saying something and doing something. All I know is that you have to have a hook in like the first sixty seconds, and if yeah. you're getting your attention in the first sixty seconds, then it's game over. Yeah. Or at least it's going to drop off. Like those first sixty seconds of a video, like say your piece. What's it, why? What are you doing? What's the joke? What's the thesis? Something. Gotta get their attention, gotta make them grab their interest. You know, if it's not, they're gonna go, mm, there's literally 10 billion other videos that I can watch instead. So, yeah, sometimes it's just making it weird enough at the beginning to, for someone to be like, oh, like, what's, what is this? Um, now, did you say you have an intro that you put at the beginning of your videos, or are you just in general asking about the beginning of the videos? Yeah, well, I mean, like, I have like a two second thing that I do, like, as an intro, but I'm just like, in order to introduce the video, like, I'll just do completely random stuff. And I used to think it had to do with, as far as depending, like, how long the actual intro bit was before I got into the actual, like, meet the videos, but, like, I've done long intros that had great retention and long intros that had bad retention. So I just wanted to, like, maybe a trick or something. So what would you do for the videos where you had good retention? You try to identify anything in it, where you're like, I did that right? Or ask your audience what they liked about it? Um, I don't know, I feel kind of weird specifically asking my audience, like, hey guys, this video that um, 1,000 and like 1,500 people watch, what did you like about it? Yeah, you can, I there's nothing wrong with that. You can be like, hey, you know, I was all like, you know, ask them in the comments. Yeah, yeah. there's, um, because when you look at the uh, like analytics for retention time, you usually start with the intro, where it's like, the intro's right, right here, and then it goes down. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, but then sometimes you'll see like a video where it's like, it goes up a little bit, and yeah. you'll, you'll see like, oh, what happened there? Yeah. yeah. What was, what was, what causes a spike? Sometimes a video will get shared around for a specific timestamp, mm -hmm. and, and you'll see a video that has nothing, and then whoa, and then it's like, <laughs> okay, think, what was that? I think that's usually me doing a, like a slapstick thing where I hurt myself. 
<laughs> well, hurt yourself. You hurt yourself. <laughs> Just think up the full video. Yeah. Take a hammer and bomb yourself in the head. Yeah, retention is also something like you want to also pay attention to um, some videos will get uh, like poor retention. If they're like say say it's a video that is uh, playing at the beginning of like when someone clicks on your channel and, and some people have that set to autoplay and sometimes someone's going onto a YouTube channel and they're like ah, no 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 whatever this is stop um, you know that so the video plays for two to three seconds it stops so the retention's like no everyone just stopped watching but really you're getting this kind of an off read on the percentage of people that are quote watching the video anything but that so that that's another one to. That's not yeah, on your channel. I learned something. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Success. Remember, just be funny. Okay. Yeah. Did you question? <laughs> uh, let's get some more questions. Yes. Uh, quite a few of my more popular videos are now being sent to kids, like for oh, no. kids and oh, no. oh, no. no. Should I stick with YouTube or look for other things? What kind of content do you make? Uh, PMBs, but also like I've been starting to like quantify entire movies. Mm -hmm. Prince of Egypt, Mulan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So they're long. It's, I can't like do TikTok because they're long. Did you try setting it to a moment? Yeah. And okay. Like because there there is there is a, a setting for like just videos and also a setting for like the entire channel. Yeah, yeah. Everything right. adult. Why did it like uh, cast a role? I think that's their name. They do um, the like animated recaps of movies. Oh, yeah. yeah, cast runs into the same issue. I mean, yeah, yeah, you got a channel with like almost like five million subscribers, who still gets their content like sent to kids. Because YouTube's weird. It's like um, yeah, you send your videos to adults, so kids don't watch it unless there's such an influx of kids still watching it that our algorithm will then defy your manual choice and say you're wrong. Despite like cast will put it, like I remember there's one I I think one. Um, it's probably done a few times, but there was like a particular episode where he had like someone's like, character's head blowing up into a bloody like pole. To be like, is this for kids? <laughs> no. And it still got sent to kids. So it's like YouTube is just stupid. Either the algorithm or some bots do it, or they just deliberately are like, there's so much money we're making from kids watching this that we'll just ignore them. It's it's hard to get like in contact with like anyone like that's an actual person at YouTube. Yeah, it's so hard. It's like I know like um I watched this fun way, but he got um he uh, he got like flagged for um, spam because he had a, a, a link to Xbox and his sources uh, on his, on his video, and people are like, uh, YouTube's like, this is spam. We're giving you a, a strike. A strike? Yeah, they gave him a strike. What? Yeah. And then like uh, spam? Okay. Yeah. Well, it was, it was just a link to Hawaiians and shambles. Um, so. Yeah, but he, he was able to get it. Um, a fix though, but like I, I feel bad for like anybody who doesn't have a big YouTube following. Yeah, like, you always yeah. have a large following on Twitter to make a fuss to get YouTube's attention, and so often some other folks don't have that, so it's just like, well, I'm screwed. Yeah, yeah. I, I the the other unfortunate bit here, and anyone that's been around YouTube long enough has probably dealt with this at least once. Um, YouTube acts like there is a team of people that are ready to help you out. Uh -huh. Has anyone done the live chat? And you're like, oh, oh, I'm not talking to a real person. Like, oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> you're like, hot five Sundays? It's, it's all AI generated. And it's like, okay, neat program, but this isn't helping at all. Uh, it's very frustrating. Um, this, uh, I feel like this has been the death, well, not even recent at this point. It's, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's been this, like this for years. Forever. But, uh, yeah, this is. It's just, it's weird to me that YouTube seems to have made no attempts at fixing both. Like, again, like this stuff where it's like, oh yeah, sorry, that's the auto setting, this bot is going around. I think that YouTube is entirely taken over by robots at this point, and it's the beginning, it's the beginning of like iRobot with Will Smith. Like, this is, this is how it starts, guys. It's YouTube and then everything else, so good luck to us all. Can you Not even anymore, I doubt it. Can you? And like AI, like algorithms, making art pieces and stuff. <laughs> Dolly too. All right. Next question. Well, I'm on for you just because we've got other folks. Yes. Right. Sure. Yes. Oh, okay. Two things. One. Todd Oliver says hi. Ew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> two. At what point is it okay to make a side channel? 
the side channel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, for me, now again, this is answering more from kind of a hobby perspective of channels. I've had the AC Race Fest channel for uh, obviously a long time, and for that one, I've used it to upload mostly anything and everything that I've wanted to. However, when Sarah and I decided that we wanted to make a gaming channel, I, I was, we were like, well, of course we're going to make a separate channel for that uh, because of our, our con, uh, the content upload, the amounts, the schedule. Uh, it would have obliterated everything else on the AC Race Best channel. And it's not what a lot of people signed up for on the AC Race Best channel. So it was like, okay, here's the time. It, 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 like, the content itself is going to differ enough um, that it makes no sense to bombard everybody with like, hey, I just completely revamped the, the channel, which I could have done, right? Like, and I'm putting big quotation on this because I obviously <laughs> still make AC Race Best content. But it's... The gaming channel itself, if it was like, oh, I'm not really doing any of the stuff on AC Race Fest anymore. Now uh, I want to do a gaming channel. Because people have done this in the past where they're like, I, I want to go a completely new direction with stuff. And sometimes it works. Other times it's people going, what happens? Like, what's this channel? What, I, I don't even know what I'm signed up for anymore. So for me, I feel like if, if you're going to be doing something vastly different from the direction of one channel, um, sometimes it's it can be helpful and maybe even respectful a little bit to, to your subscribers and, and your regular audience to be like, hey, I got this if you're interested, but this channel is going to continue doing what it's doing. I mean, yeah, you have to make sure. I've learned this recently. Then you have the time and the energy to dedicate towards it, and then you have reasonable expectations. I mean, so much of it is just subjective to you, your content, your audience. You schedule the quality of the production, like, I guess, involvement. But, um, yeah, you have to scale it out and be honest with yourself. That's the big thing, be honest with yourself, where it's like, this is now getting my main channel, or uh, this isn't working, let's just stop and try again, or take a break and figure this out. So I have a gaming channel, Tom, and just recently we were like, let's take a break. Because I'm like, I was struggling to keep up. And I'm like, let's, let's take a break. and reassess the schedule and how much it needs to go into it, how much, I guess, just resources to make sure this actually makes sense. And that, you know, because you don't want to, like, force something. Because if you're forcing your audience, they'll detect it. You're like, this isn't working. This feels off from your other channel. It doesn't feel the same. I don't like it. And it's like, well, shoot, I don't want to force anything. So, yeah, that's my uh, two cents on that. Yes? Indentured servants. <laughs> um, have you seen Donkey Ollie? Someone will lock the door. Uh, fire. You're all hired. Um, that's a, a lot of, of for YouTube for me is just like again, you just kind of roll with it to see what you find. I never started my channel expecting I'd be big at this point at all. Uh, for you know how many views the channel gets and the content I make folks who I work with, it kind of just happens on its own, and then you kind of, it's like, it's like, okay, it introduces elements, you're like, okay, um, I guess I could work with an editor, a friend of mine, and to be fair, though, also when I started, it was kind of, you know, it was like the mid-2010s professionally, I said professionally, you know, kind of, where it's kind of becoming like a, a hobby that brought in some money to, okay, it's 2018, this is now my job, let's keep going, and now it's, you know, today, I'm like, I have, like, Five editors, I've Tom who helps me to write research, you know, Lizzie you helped me with the art thumbnails, Bill, you've helped me before in the past with just kind of consulting on videos and editing videos. And it's cool. A lot of it's like, you know, I need to work with my friends so I can fight with them. It's not a nepotism, because I'm like, well, if I gotta work more with them, they know what they're doing, then yeah, I'll work with them. Um, but uh, I guess also kind of you have to like measure the work itself, you know, how much work am I how many videos are we making? How long are the videos? Is it high quality production or is it something super easy and like surface level? Okay, you have to like measure it and then you can take it from there as far as who you want to bring on. But also, the culture from like 2016 with the internet has shifted, you know, quite a bit to this moment. Where like nowadays it's like you got Fiverr, you can go to Fiverr, or is it Fiverr, the website? Fiverr, yeah, yeah. Fiverr, you can get editors there. I think there's a lot more people who are like, we know the business, we know 
uh, how like also a lot of these websites have grown like a lot in the past seven years to where now they can actually like make enough money to like you can make money on YouTube, you can make money on TikTok, you can make money on these websites, and there are also workers who know that are ready to work alongside you, whether you hire them as you know, a stranger on Fiverr or a friend that you know who just so happens to be the editor that you can work with. Did that answer your question more or less? But uh, what was the question? I don't know, I'm sure I didn't, like, where's the bathroom? <laughs> no, it was just uh, how, how does it work? Or like, how, how does, I mean, you, yeah, you basically just answer. How does it work? Yeah, I mean, if you're lucky enough to have friends who are talented who can work with you, or it's, just make sure also there's no like power struggles out there. <laughs> Tell them they're in a blast. <clears throat> Next question. <laughs> Matt. Howdy. Dressed up. I know, right? Rich, so, Rich, Rich, Rich. going off that thing you said about going to Fiverr, getting some people to the, you know, that know what they're doing, that you're hiring on or have offered their service to you, how do you differentiate the ones that are good and know what they're doing versus the ones that are looking to make a quick buck off of you? Uh, I guess check out their resume, check out their... Yeah, check out like their previous work. Yeah. But sometimes it's like a person who's like, okay, um, the price is right, where it's like 50 bucks for edits and it looks all right, but 50 bucks. And there's other editors who are like, they'll be like, no, well, if it's a video essay that's half an hour long, I'm going to need... Mm, Let's start off with four hundred dollars, possibly more, if it like there's a stretch goal involved, or that, or I spent this many hours making this video, so I need a hundred dollars extra. So, I mean, I guess the you as the content creator also need, you need to be mindful of like how much resources you're putting into it, because ultimately, if it is a hobby, you're willing to invest in it, and you're coming and it's coming at a cost. That's your yeah. Goal. It, it, if you're if you're like a smaller creator, do not like. Hire an editor, like if you can't afford it. Um, like well, it helps though if you yeah, can manage it. Yeah, if you can manage it. Because, like, like Saber started out off like editing like everything himself. Mm -hmm. um, but then he got big enough to rent to like hire editors. Yep. I'm not good at that. <laughs> so I'm going to hire other folks to do it for me. But yeah, you kind of just got to feel it out. But there's, I've been told that there's some good editors in Fiverr who are like, it's like, yeah, 50 bucks can take you far. It also saves you time to work over the projects. All right, questions? Yes? Uh, how are you YouTube premium viewers of that video? It's like 5%. YouTube premium. There aren't, there aren't that many YouTube premium users. At least compared to all folks who use it for free. Yeah. I have YouTube premium, because I don't want to get it. Same. And, um, but, uh, and also, like, for YouTube premium, like, even, there are moments where maybe you can get, like, restricted for a content creator, but the YouTube premium monetization still goes through. So I like that. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. But uh, it's, it's still 5%. It's not like yeah, a yeah. amount. Yeah, I also just use YouTube premium for like music. Music, I can download stuff. Um, it, it, it's weird because like, YouTube used to have that feature just default on their app, but then they're like, shoot, how can we make people buy YouTube premium? Let's remove free features we already have. So we can sell it back to them, which is kind of you know sucky, but whatever. Who would have thought a giant corporation would do that for money? I <laughs> <laughs> the humanity. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. You just mentioned that with like YouTube Premium and everything else. Uh, I don't know if you know uh, someone like YouTube like Line Detective. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Like uh, how YouTube Vance is basically piracy. What is your opinion on that? Like people who, like use ad blockers to like you know watch YouTube and sometimes it also affects your videos. Like, what is your opinion on that? Like, how do you say this? Man, I don't blame them. Yeah. I don't blame them. Well, YouTube has, it was for the longest time, like, one ad to start a video. Yeah. It was two. It'll be three eventually. Probably yeah. by the end of I think they have it now to work. Because you know how you, uh, before, because I've seen some people um, mention this, and I, I think it's just rolling out to, like, different people uh, who would use the, the app or the, the website. Um, where it would have, like, oh, yeah, here's the, the ads, here's the skip ads. But now it's like, skip ad, and it goes to the next ad. Yeah. yeah. Oh. They, no, I mean, YouTube's for the longest time has been biding their time. Where yeah. they're like, YouTube came at a cost, a massive cost to Google. But Google could afford it, because it's Google. And they're like, it's fine. Let's keep bankrolling YouTube. And, you know, we're losing money, we're losing money, we're losing money. But the audience has grown over the years. And now it's like, I mean, YouTube. It's like the video platform. It is. It is. And that's the, that's the point. They want to outlast the competition. They want to throw enough money to go, we'll be. Yeah, there's, there's been a, a ton of like, uh, like competitors to YouTube, all of them have nothing. Nothing. They, they are, when people are like, 
YouTube treat your own good, you know, like, yeah, for all seven people who go to the website, like, what's the point? Uh, YouTube has all the viewership, for the most part. And they, and that's why they spent so much money, is to kill the competition. And now they're like, all right, two ads, no, four. You know, they're, they're gonna start raising the you know, ad count, because they're gonna start getting their money back. And uh, and also YouTube is just a mad, I mean, for my, I have three my nieces and a nephew, they, treat YouTube the way that I treated TV when I was a kid. Like Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon, for me, that's YouTube for them. And I'm like, wow, YouTube played this quite, you know, handedly. Which is why they're trying to fight back against TikTok, because they're like, that's your next competition. Though the platform's drastically different than theirs, and for whatever reason they're trying to do TikTok, well, TikTok's trying to be YouTube, don't figure. Um, usually those efforts don't end up working. Though, uh, for, okay, let me just say, for YouTube shorts, can't they just have, because you look at the homepage for a YouTube channel where it has the shorts and then, like, I guess, the normal uploads. Yeah. They mush it all together. Yeah. Up. They need to make a little tab that says yeah. shorts. It's such a simple fix. I don't know why they won't do it. Mm -hmm. so, whatever. Um, I, I also want to add, uh, this is kind of on the, the other side of the ad stuff. Like, sometimes you'll maybe be watching a video and you're like, oh my gosh, this creator has ads everywhere. Sometimes it's uh, all good. It is. I remember there was one time I got, I think I got contacted, or not contacted, but I, I was, I saw a comment come through uh, where someone was like, man, this this video has uh, like an ad like every three minutes. <laughs> and it was a, like an hour long Brody's rip oh, from like oh, seven oh, years ago. What, was, what happened is YouTube recently went through and like reorganized ads in their videos to get people like you where they're like, you had maybe three ads before, I'm like, we'll put them in 54. <laughs> I, I, I clicked on it because when, when you look at the ad, ad, it shows you the tick marks. It, it, I couldn't see the timeline. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Your still timeline for a little like, new zoom intern putting ads is so finicky where it's like, <laughs> freezes up. And it's like all dragons and <laughs> like like portal speed. So, yeah. Or Google, small company. So, on. Uh, no, 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 it'll be okay. Uh, but yeah, so if you ever see that kind of stuff too, sometimes it's just a matter of you might be looking at an older video that the creator them said, I didn't know. I didn't know this was happening. So I, I got this comment, I'm like, what, what is this? <laughs> Why are there ads everywhere? It was unwatchable. It's like, it, yeah, so. Um, That's why I do YouTube Premium. So I'm like, it eventually, yeah. it will, it, I can afford it, first off. And then also, I know that, like, as far as ads go, it's going to get worse. Though, and also, for what it's worth, though, YouTube, like, has made mistakes where like, they remove dislikes. I hate that. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, or, or uh, you know, a pro tip, there's a Google Chrome extension and one for Firefox where you can reinstall the dislike bar on YouTube. I recommend it. Yeah. I think there's also it's, it's for, still, it still shows up because people still use it. Well, I think there's also one that Tom mentioned for uh, mobile where you can do that as well for mobile devices. But like them getting rid of dislikes, it's like, don't lie to me. You know, they're like, we're doing it for the smaller creators. I'm like, you no, shot. No, you're doing it for the corporations. You're doing it yeah. for the corporate like, movie trailers and whatnot to, to not make it look as bad. Where it's like, because I mean, it, it should be that way. We can see it just like bar. Yeah. Because like, it's terrible for tutorials. Tor uh, tutorials? Or yeah. it's like, how do we do CPR? Uh, well, this tutorial <laughs> <laughs> thought it would be 20%, 80%. And it's like, well, I guess I punch their face until they wake up. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, I'm going to try to get some new folks here, and we'll come back to y'all. Yes? What's the worst case of creative block you've run into, and how have you overcome it? Worst case of creative block for me was this time last year, actually. It was going to sound like it's by this time this year. <laughs> well, um, my dad was out of COVID last year, um, but I was never afraid. And that, like, I came back home, and I spent like, the next three weeks just kind of like not making videos, which is tough, because like, I went to like, an art panel yesterday, um, where the artist drawn a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And this so one asked a simple question like, you ever stop making art? Like, yeah, we will take some days off, take some weeks off. And it varies from person to person. I don't have that luxury. If I stop for too long, YouTube's like, where's our money? You know, get out of here. You're getting blacklisted now. Um, but I took three weeks off, not by choice, just because I couldn't think. And then I finally came back, and I came back up again, kept moving. But um, yeah, it was like three weeks. And I was like, damn, it felt like an eternity of, of just nothing. Because YouTube's on the analytic page, they will let you know. But they're like, see this giant red arrow? We're not doing so hot this week, are we? I'm like, who's we? Shut the hell up. <laughs> like, yeah. they turn, it's like a manager. It's like, mm, right? Yeah, Jazz showed me a very good video by um, Super iPad Wolf. 
um, about like Creator Burnout and everything, mm -hmm. but about how YouTube kind of like <laughs> makes you feel bad for doing Definitely, that. Right. Yeah. Well, you just don't have like a Reddit or something there. Like, it's like, yeah, and, and uh, it used to not have that list of like, oh yeah, here's your top ten recent videos. Which is pretty clever yeah. them to do that. Yeah. Because like, when, when you're doing well, it feels good. Whereas like, yeah. they have a little fire. Yeah, it was like. And it goes down to five. But, uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it's real. Yeah, I still feel that. I, I, I wish I could go ahead. I, I wish I could go ahead. Right now. I wish I could go ahead. I can't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, unless just, you have like a like a backlog of things where it's like, oh yeah, I'll schedule this out. Like I work, work really hard to put these scheduled videos out. Which is the purpose though. Yeah. I mean, the purpose of it. Yeah. Like, oh, I want to take a break. How do I do it? Work twice as hard. Yeah. And it's like great. Yeah. We, uh, I, I also experienced, it, it's almost, I guess, the pre-burnout, which is like before I get to a project and I'll keep putting it off where I'm like, oh my gosh, like it's daunting. Um, like, uh, I mean, I guess an example uh, of, of a daunting project would be a Ronnie's React, where it's like, okay, I got hours of footage to go through, I need to start chopping. Until I start going through people's footage, like the first step of the process, it's like, oh man, this is, you know, this, here comes a couple weeks worth of devotion into this, you know, this video. But I always find, once I start doing it, A, I feel better, because I'm like, okay, that, that pile is getting smaller. We're getting closer to the finish line, but uh, but also just kind of in general, like once once I get those wheels turning on a project, then it's like okay, we're, we're going now. My brain's like yes, let's you know let's do this, and and I, I find it that yeah, especially like with bigger projects, it's usually that first step where it's like oh man. And it's it's not really it's almost not burnout. Like it's it's almost, like I said it's almost like just trying to get the engine started. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that's been uh, what I find. Uh, I, I've learned over the years is that if I can just get started on a project, it actually creates some self motivation to get it done. It's it's I think it's called like like executive dysfunction, where it's like you can't start something. It's like eh, do it, do it. <laughs> so it's all right. Yeah. All right, questions. I don't know. All right, do people want to ask questions or are we sort of going back to? Right, it's funny, I just want to point out the red card has never actually asked a question during this panel. <laughs> and now you get to. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so, this goes for you, Ray. Um, oh. uh, not necessarily like, like the, the, the YouTube, but I guess, you know, like the, I guess, like, you know, like, it's more of an equipment question. Okay. Um, um, uh, I've always struggled with not having a very steady hand. Um, your footage always seems to be very steady. Is that, is that your hand or is that the camera that has a steady lens? Okay, so it's a combo. Um, I So I started out with cameras that didn't have stabilizers. So I had to, you know, because you know, I, I started out with, before I ever did convention vlogs, I used to walk around like family vacations and whatnot, like recording stuff. And I'd be like, I can't wait to look at the footage. And then you look at it, and it's like, <laughs> like, you're like I, don't, I don't know what's going on in this video. Sorry. So, so over the years, and, and then same with like with the convention vlogs, you know, you go watch, and you're like, okay, this stuff looks good, but it doesn't work so well when I'm doing this. And and so over the years, like, and it's been kind of a joke uh, amongst our group, is uh, especially like when we have like a friend who finally makes it out to a convention, they're like, oh, so you you do. You are just basically like this the whole time. You know, this is this is this is my convention stance, right? It's weird because the camera's not in my hand right now, and it feels really cold and naked. But um, so so I've had years of figuring out, I guess, just kind of in general, walking around with a camera. Uh, same with other racetrack where we've done like interviews with people, and sometimes that does involve us moving around. So I've had a lot of that experience. But um, the main camera that I use for vlogging, which is the one in the back there, um, I, at least with these camcorders, which by the way, I don't know, I really don't know how much longer we're gonna be seeing regular camcorders because they're becoming less and less uh, available. Um, and it's kind of a weird train to see because I'm just so used to being like, yeah, camcorders. But like for the racing stuff that we do, getting cameras like these, it's becoming harder to acquire. Uh, less companies are making them. 
when they switch numbers to them. It feels like they're phasing out, and I don't know if it's because of like smartphones and everyone's like, oh, I'll just record yeah, stuff yeah. on that. Like, I, I have people for Brony's yeah. Direct that they're like, I'm recording on my phone. Um, I'm recording my sponsor spots on my phone. Yeah, it's easier. Right, and it's good quality. Yeah. Better yeah. audio so good. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but with that, um, I, I do know that Sony, uh, and I'm sure some of the others do, but some of the higher end cameras, they do have stabilizers built in. And it can be an incredible game changer. Like even for me, for doing this for years, I, I'm like, oh, heck yeah. Like, because it's, it's hit and miss for what you want to use it for. If you're walking around a convention, stabilizer is great. If you're filming, let's say, you know, I'm at the racetrack filming cars going around, not so great because the stabilizer tries to like fix what you're focusing on. So if you're like, oh my gosh, something's going by, it's like, well, wait, you want to be over here? No, you want to be over here, and it starts like auto correcting, and you're like, what's where's the camera going? <laughs> so that can be frustrating. So in that case, you turn it off. But yes, uh, these cameras, uh, like I said, the these camcorders, and they can be uh, on the they are on the pricier end of a camcorder. But stabilizers, uh, they are a game changer. Even GoPros uh, are starting to have those as well, yeah. uh, built into them, so. Yeah. Uh, can I talk to you about this, what kind of model camera that yeah. you're going to use to yeah. see if I can invest in that? This stuff? is the best time to figure out a model camera for me because I actually have the camera with me. I have people ask me online, like, what, what model camera is it? And I'm like, okay, so that camera's hooked up to the gaming channel, this or that. So yeah, uh, after the panel, um, I could get you a, a model number. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I have like five minutes left. Yeah. Um, any more questions? Um, yes. Hi. Um, I don't know if this is already answered because I came a little late. Um, but... Be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Also, like, don't take it to heart because audiences can be very finicky. Don't forget that you also are a reviewer. 
uh, that you are a viewer of content yourself, and uh, let's say there's a channel you like, and all of a sudden they just completely change their tone to something different, where it's like, oh, this channel reviews um, Marvel movies, and now they're reviewing the David Bunch film. And it's like, ah, well, that's what I'm subscribed for. Unless, and this is the goal for any content creator, your viewers are there for you, the creator. That's it. Um, like Mark Blair could do it. Yeah, that's the thing. Because for most folks, it's content, 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 not the creator. But if you mention the creator, then you won't. So, and I haven't gotten to that point yet. I might never get to that point. That, that's how like, much of the goal is for all these folks. Though it's also not always about like subscriber you know, count either. Because there's some channels that have 50,000 subscribers, and they've got dedicated viewers that love them. You know, also like a Patreon keep things afloat too. So, it takes many forms. I'll say that when it comes to internet stuff. Uh, we done. Okay, one minute left. Oh, oh. One minute. Last question in the corner. One minute. Oh. Hi, Queen Yes. There's a few that people have suggested in my way. Um, I want to cover more international like animation in general because there's just so much out there. I recently did a video about like Bulgaria Treasure Planet, and I looked more into what they Bulgaria's field for animation, and there was a surprising amount. Where I'm like, wow! Like, I got felt like an ignorant American. Where I'm like, I didn't know about this. But uh, yeah, I definitely want to look more into about Latin America. See what they have to offer. There was like some movie from. Um, it was like a, what was it about? It was a little girl with a man with a monster, and it was like one of Mexico's first animated films, and they threw a lot of money into it, and apparently it's really good. And I, need, I want to review that. I need to watch it first. But do you remember what the name of the movie was? Is it like Bruno or something like that? They actually have a series. They have a series.